Looky, looky. Once again, we are live. Episode 29 of Inside the Rapper Studio. Go ahead and send that request, SA. It's a little dark on your side. That's... Oh, there you go. What's <laughs> good, man? Can you see me now? All right, everybody. Welcome to episode 29 of Inside the Rapper Studio. Once again, I am your host, Score F. Swayze. And today we have a very special guest in the building. He is who I consider the king of chords, the guy with the melodies, the man with the melodies. One of my favorite producers out right now. Everybody, please show your love. Drop hearts, drop likes, drop comments for the one, the only, uh, Dizzy. How's it going, bro? It's going well, man. How you feeling, bro? Can't complain. Every day is a blessing. Every time we step foot in this earth. Um, one thing that I always do with all the guests, as I'm pretty sure you're sure of, is that there's an origin story told at the beginning. So everybody kind of gets the idea of the artist that's on for the show. So could you give us a synopsis, a genesis of how everything got started musically for L. Busy? Well, I started making music when I was in like middle school. And I started taking it seriously about in high school. And uh, I was going to Newtown, right? And uh, ran into my buddy, and I was running with a little click. Then I started making beats for the, what do you call it? The school announcements. That's how it all started. I started making beats like that, man. And I just been in the music ever since, man. Uh, you know, and up to now, bro. So it's like, oh. can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. No, so yeah, I just um, you know, from here and I I've been in a uh church pretty much my whole life. So I used to play the drums and you know, that's I just got musically inclined from that. For, uh, gotcha, gotcha. So with uh your upbringings within school and church, do you feel as though without these structures you still wouldn't make music? Or would you say that you always had I guess, a musical bone in your body. Man, I, I think I always had, like, a, a music bone in my body, man. Even since I was, like, young, man. It's from listeners from, the, you know, the great 90s, from Dr. Dre and, you know, Snoop Dogg and them, those producers right there, you know, Dre, and up to even the production from Wu-Tang and all of that, man. That was just, like, you know, it was just lovely, man, for real. <laughs> that definitely had a, a good influence on my uh, music. Gotcha, gotcha. So the first project that I wanted to talk about today with you is something that you dropped just recently, which is called Voids. Could you give us a little detail on how everything got started conceptually with that project? Um, Voids started out as I started off as a beat tape. I wanted to start as, um, you know, I felt like there's a whole lot of voids in the uh, music industry and a lot of good music that's in the void that you know what I'm saying that people just necessarily don't listen to and I feel like it's a lot of boys that we got internally that we don't um necessarily agree with addressing and stuff and I, I feel like I can take everything from my frustration and my happiness and everything and make it like my music so it's like my just void just a, my my music man. Gotcha. So the one song that I want to stick out with and talk to you about from Voids is Masked Up. Could you tell us how you came up with Masked Up? Oh, man, that started about a year ago. I was just cooking up with my man, uh, Glenn Diesel, my man Glenn. And it started off, I made the stem, cooked it up, and then we just whipped it up, man. It, just, it was just a banger, man. Got you. How long have you known Glenn? 
I've known Glenn since. Well, I know I was in high school. I went to uh, Milford with him, but uh, about, hmm, about 10 years. But I really got close with him on music about five years ago, about four or five years ago. Got you, got you. So with the uh, relationship that you have with Glenn and, like, other producers as well, do you feel as, that, feel as though that camaraderie kind of uh, nurtures your drive of um, producing? Yeah, man, I, I feel as though, um, you know, everybody that, that I'm around, you know, is just uh, very intriguing and very talented. And I always feel like I got to sharpen my blade. You know what I'm saying? If everybody saw it sharp, yeah. I don't know what people can carry this and stuff out there with no with no dag and everybody got swords and stuff, man. You know what I mean? It just, it just get me, keep me on my uh, P's and Q's, man, you know. Got you. Um... I talked yesterday on my show about beat battles and showcases and things of that nature. Do you have any history within beat battles and showcases? Beat battles? Um, nope. Nope. Do you feel as though that's something you can dig into during this quarantine? Man, I would, I would love to, man. I, you know, I, as a producer, I wasn't really even uh, like out there. I just recently started, you know, stepping out and looking, you know, for like placements and all of that now and did the instrumental tape. Gotcha. Um, with this project that you just recently dropped with Voids, um, from what I'm listening to, like I do like my live listens during the episode just so I can get an idea of how everything sounds live. And so far it has somewhat of a simplistic yet complex kind of feel to it because you have like your sound bites here you have your like quotes there and yet once it all mixes down it comes to this complete sound of like i guess a message so what would you consider the message of voids to be the message of voids i would the message of voids like i said it was just it was just for people to explore that feeling, because music gives you a feeling and it can help you out if you're feeling bad or if you're feeling good. Even if you're feeling good, the same song, cause you can still feel the same, you know, thing from it. And it's, I just felt like um, I wanted people to get, you know, that, you know, that we here, that I'm here, that I'm here for real. And I ain't playing no more games with you for real. <laughs> like, there's no more games being played. And, I, you know, the message from the beginning to the end, how everything, like you said, was put together from the, you know, it's real, and like I said, I just want the message to people to feel it. Just feel it. Just feel my music. Gotcha, gotcha. So, for those that's listening, that was messed up by our wonderful guest of episode twenty nine of Inside the Rapper Studio, uh, Dizzy. Once again, thank you very much for joining me on this episode. Uh, I like to thank everybody for coming through and showing love and showing up. On this episode, just give a few more shout outs. Shouts out to my bad. I slipped it down. Shouts out to Ricky Jacobs just walking in. Huge shouts out to you. Shouts out to Turfland. Shouts out to Benjamin Banger. Shouts out to Peace Russie. Shouts out to everybody that's coming through, showing love and showing the support and all that. So the next thing I wanted to talk to you about with this uh subject, now that we're on like I guess the camaraderie of uh producers is working with other producers because I feel like a lot of the times when I talk to producers about like making music and making music with other people it's always usually with other rappers so what would you consider your experience with making music with other producers I've had a great experience with being working with other producers you know uh, I tried to cut back and not in like a cocky way with myself. I right? where did I go? That uh, it's been just a, a really good experience because, uh, like I said, everybody around me is nice. So when I say I don't, I don't spend time with. I don't mean to be rude or no. I don't waste my time. I don't waste my time with nobody. That's, that's not good. It's a waste of time for me. I'm I'm 31 years old. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm trying to. I'm just trying to. Uh, that's I have a pretty good uh, experience, man. That's it. Gotcha. I feel like one of the collabs that you always like do very well with is with Benjamin Banger. 
Uh, could you describe how you met Ben and how you started working with him musically? Say it again. One of the collabs that you usually do really well with, in my opinion, is with Benjamin Banger. So could you tell us how you, one, met Benjamin Banger and, two, how well your relationship is musically with Ben? Oh, man, I met Ben years ago. And through church again, through church again, uh, and um, I researched, and then Ben just like clicked, and I, you know, I found out he did music, and I listened to his music because this was like again, 10, like ten years ago, man. And I've seen him, uh, like Bud, and I like, and that is the experience with Ben, just been, just great, man. Especially just seeing him evolve to what he is, to, like right now, like. This is like watching Dragon Ball Z, watching somebody go to Archer Instant from Zeno from, <laughs> from, 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 from like, like watching the whole what's in there. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like I said, it's been great, man. I'm just glad to be around a great producer like that, man. For real. No cap. Gotcha, gotcha. Huge shouts out to Benjamin Banger, by the way. Um the next song, um the next song I, I wanted to... Oh yeah, shout out. Oh yeah, shout out Court. Shout out Court. Yeah. <laughs> Next song I wanted to talk to you about on the show is actually a collaboration that you've done with Benjamin Banger, and it turned out to be a placement recently. Uh, the beat is called Jungle, but the song is called Something Else. And I believe it's uh, Spanish, correct? It's, I think it's Italian. I think it's Italian. It's like Liguango or something like that. Yeah, Liguango. like... Like go something. Like Google or something like that. I don't know how to say. Googly googly. <laughs> so how did you uh come across getting this uh placement, so to speak? Oh man. Uh it started we whipped up a uh cooked up something and just my man Ben shout out to Ben again. He uh cooked that up with me and we sent that out. And we actually, that same beat was uh, one of my biggest placements, actually. Uh, was went, That same beat went on high times for another video. And he uh, got it done. Yep. There you are he got it to, I'm not sure exactly the terms or how he got it to them. But I'll put uh, international track. Gotcha. This is definitely like one of those very different songs that like kind of stick out to everybody for that matter. Like even stuck out to me, like when you sent me the songs to like do interview. First of all, I went straight to it just off the title. And like once I started listening to it, I'm like, this is very, very different. I thought it was Spanish because like Italian and Spanish are like literally the same thing. Kind of, sort of. But like once I really started listening to it, and like it kind of flew with, it flew together with everything else with the beat. Do you feel as though with your production, you enhance other rappers with their like skills when they rap? Definitely, more, most definitely. You gotta be creative because you know, I feel as though you know the style and the way we create music, especially with me and Ben, uh, like collab, man. There's always something. Special, like something I don't even know what the to how to even describe it, what, what genre to put it in. So it automatically makes the MC gotta just dig and you know come with something slick. Man. Gotcha. Even with this switch up at the end, like it's a totally different like energy, like from anything mm -hmm. else that you hear nowadays. Like it's extremely creative, it's extremely like avant garde. It's almost futuristic and yet primal at the same time. You know what I mean? I guess that's kind of the reason why it's called Jungle, because it just sounds so, like, animalistic. Do you feel like you capture a lot of, like, emotions within all your different beats? Most most definitely. Most definitely. Like, uh, that, that beat right there, again, it started with me and Ben just cooking up a... Uh, started like on some real like Congo type way different like on some African like type even like Caribbean type of beat at first but then we flipped it and man it, 
you hit it turned into a whole other into a whole other beat, man. It did. I I'm not gonna lie. Like that's actually one of my favorite beats of yours that that I've heard. Just because it's just it's once again it's very like out out of this world. It's very avant garde, but at the same time. You can put that on any place. You can put that on any playlist. You can put that on any like radio station, and it fits with everything else, and it stands out from everything else at the same time. Definitely. So, for those that's just walking in, and uh, that was recently. I I'm really trying to pronounce this right. That was lag we lag we Black Weongla. We're going to go with that. Black Weongla by Stello featuring King Kong. Uh, produced by our wonderful guest of episode 29 of Inside the Rapper Studio, El <coughs> Busy. El uh, Busy, once again, thank you very much for taking time out of your day for answering these tough, hard hitting, uh, in your face questions. Um, I appreciate your patience. Um, Next question that I wanted to ask you about, or at least topic I wanted to talk to you about, was indeed placements. So as a producer, a lot of the times, they kind of see placements rules everything around me, whereas though, like, most kind of just stay within their bounds and make the music and kind of run their race. I wanted to get your opinion on placements and how you see them fit in your career. Again, uh, placements it, it come with just uh, stepping out there. Again, I wasn't before. I was just one of uh, what you call it, uh, and house producer, one of the people that sit in the house and just make beats and don't go out and interact with nobody. When I say then, you know, some people have hundreds of beats, but I just got out there and I the the placements and um, just building relationships with people, man. Just I just been getting a lot of placements just getting out there gotcha gotcha so what would you consider your favorite placement to be most definitely the uh shout out high times the high times video and shout out denver dad for that was definitely the biggest one i'm like a big stoner big flower child vegan you know <laughs> everything disease, you know but it that was my favorite one. High Times is definitely the greatest one, my greatest uh, placement. And and I'll bring it back and shout out Newtown for my first placement for uh, having me on a uh, morning announcement. I used to be on a morning announcement, so shout out them. You came in the game with the placements. <laughs> <laughs> you go the fight. <laughs> so the next uh, track I wanted to play and talk to you about was a track called Trails of the Living by Poet Deep. Could you tell us how that song came about conceptually for you? It came about, I uh, was working on a uh, mixtape, a uh, beat tape. And I was just, and I played that for this artist. And I actually met him at a, um, you know, and we just vibed from, from Jump Street. And that's it. So with this song, um, I feel like a lot of the times when it comes to those different emotions and different feelings and different textures within your beats, this kind of tends to lean on the darker side. Do you feel it's balanced with like your sounds in terms of like what you put out or is it all leaning on one side or another? Um, my music is pretty organic. It's pretty dark, so I'm a pretty, pretty, not say like a, I'm not no, no pessimistic person, but I'm a pretty dark person. I'm a pretty, like, say to myself, no nonsense type of person. So all my music is organic, so I'm pretty dark. So, so it all, get, it reflects on the beholder of the music. Yeah, everything is just organic. I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm a pretty, like a man guy. So I just try to keep everything. I make a lot of dark type of music. I like dark. I like dark type of music. Gotcha. Give a few more shout outs to every building. Uh, uh, I keep slipping on. Like, I have a huge thumb. I'm sorry for all the folks. Huge shouts out to Baby Badu. Huge shouts out to Jail Dane. Uh, thank you for supporting the show for so long. 
Um, definitely got to uh, chop it up. I actually kind of want to put more people onto the show in terms of like not just musicians, but people that's in the scene that does things for the community, for the music community. So we can definitely chop up about that. Uh, once again, thank you very much, LB, for giving us all your time of the day to answer all these tough questions. Um, what would you consider your favorite part of producing? My favorite part of producing would definitely be the part when you make the melody and put it and have time or a Patrick show anything, man. When you turn a simple <laughs> melody, like I'm trying to tell you, like that's I get excited about that. Like that's my favorite. I know like, some people do young first, but nah. Uh, that's kind of weird. I feel like a lot of people do like chords and stuff first and then kind of just go straight to drums. Do you feel mm -hmm. as though like it matters on what goes first? Well, for me, yeah, that's what I said. Some people, you know, do drums first, and I'll be like, well, that's, I don't know how you do it, and then do that. But I definitely got to do, I feel like you got to put the melody first so you can hear where you're going with the song, because unless you want to put, do it like, not, no shot, no shade to, towards the baby uh, producer, unless you want like a four or five note uh, beat, you're not going to do it. <laughs> I don't know nobody to do it like that. Right. So, I feel like when it comes to producing, as a person that makes beats from time to time myself, I kind of don't want to call myself producer because I'm not like locked in, locked in like everybody else that I've had on the show. I feel like when it comes to producing, one of my favorite parts of producing is sampling. Whereas though you make something out of like an entirely do like entirely already improvised part of making music and make something of your own. What would you have? What would you say is your opinion on sampling, and I guess the politics behind sampling? Oh man, sampling is the the greatest. Well, that's how I originally started. You know, uh, sampling sampling uh, like little theme songs and stuff originally, and sampling is like organic. That's where hip hop was made, man. You know. And, there's much stuff that you really can't sample like that. Or you get sued for, for sampling and you can make some really dope music from it. And people are not going back to the origins, I feel. I feel like with sampling, sampling kind of got a, like, a bad rep over the years just off of the legalities of it. And honestly, mm -hmm. hip-hop never started in the courtroom. It started in the streets. Do you feel as though... Yeah. Do you feel as though like having all that legal action and all the litigation and all the paperwork and lawyers kind of ruined the experience of making music and living off of music? Most most definitely. Most definitely. Because, you know, you don't got your papers right or, you know, that, that, that for your songwriting stuff right. You can be missing out on a lot of stuff and a lot of money. You know, small or big. Definitely. I feel like I kind of go way too brazen with sampling. I just kind of throw it out there, and if they catch me, they catch me, and it's going to catch up to me <laughs> eventually. Right. Do you feel as though, like, with you being, like, I guess I would say the master of the melodies, so to speak, you wouldn't necessarily have to worry about the sampling part of, like, the legal actions of producers, or would it be something that you would have to tackle down the road? Oh man, that's 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 a pretty tough question because um even if for say you don't sample something, somebody can sample your stuff, you know, and that right there is like hmm, if somebody remakes your stuff, it's like oh god. So I don't, mm, I would yeah, I would definitely say yeah, I would definitely encourage producers like. If y'all got like certain sounds or certain melodies that y'all are sending out as packs to some, you know, to patent it because people are stealing uh, <laughs> melodies and remaking people's stuff, and it's real. Y'all be surprised. I I think recently I read up about uh, it was either Jay Z, Beyonce, or both, whereas though they would literally bring people in, make original songs just so they can sample it just to avoid the entire legal process of it. 
Do you feel as though that's something we're headed in in the future of music? Um, I wouldn't say it's it's definitely there. It's already here. It's definitely already here. You know, I'm not gonna put no no people on blast or anything, but I've even had it happen uh, to me per se. You know, I've sent you know beats to producers and they pretty much did the same thing. Took the original content and flipped, used the same exact thing and just just repackaged it. That's I believe that's true, and that's a lot of people doing that right now. You just gotta be with it and have your contracts and stuff right. That is don't, send nobody no music. don't send nobody no music you don't know. So like these are very, very valuable lessons that we are learning here on this episode from the teacher himself. Uh, Dizzy. Uh, Dizzy, thanks again for uh, answering these tough questions. Thanks again for answering that tough questions because a lot of the times I freestyle these questions and really just write like topics and stuff. So for you no. to be for for you to be a good sport and answer them back diligently one and two great like heavy and very well thought answers on the fly i really do appreciate that so thank you very much lb thank you don't sweat it so the next thing i wanted to talk to you about during this interview speaking of legalities which is so crazy that now that we're on this subject is the rise of the youtube producer Recently, a lot of the times, songs start charting. A lot of uh, a lot of the times where the songs start charting, famous rappers would grab onto these YouTube producers, just snatch the link, rap on the songs, make millions of dollars, and then there's like a lot of shuffling of papers in terms of getting payment. So, could you give us your take on the rise of the YouTube producer and how it ref how it affects you personally? Um, it definitely affects me as uh, as a, as a producer. Again, like I said, uh, especially one that's out there and just not sitting behind the computer, you know, because now people are selling their exclusives for fifty dollars and seventy five dollars on YouTube, and it's a pretty open platform. But it's definitely uh it it affects me because i'm i'm part of this game so i really think that it's a, a good thing i think youtube is a great platform for uh producers and from like i said again from you know beginners up to even the ones that's dope because i believe there's money on youtube and money everywhere for producers especially if you're serious about your uh, craft gotcha gotcha so with YouTube producers on the rise and pretty much they're like essentially just snatching play placements left and right, do you feel as though they kind of crowd the space of producers in hip hop today? Or do you feel as though it's a lot of space always and it's a lot of like opportunity for everybody that's on uh, the boards? I feel like you know, as 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 we are, everybody already knows the industry is it's a lot of people in the industry. But I do believe that the people you can weed out the fifty dollar. Not trying to say fifty, or not even saying it like that. But you can tell the talent when you run across the talent. It's just so much, so many people out there. You know, you gotta get lucky that they get. You really do gotta get lucky sometimes, or just know the buzz. But I really do. Yeah, that's it. Got you. So the next song I wanted to talk to you about on this episode is a song that's actually a new single by Poet Deep, an artist that we uh, aforementioned. And it's a song called Plagues. Could you tell us how the song came to be from your side and how everything came together to make this song in the final version? And that, um, man, I, again, uh, it started with a sample I heard on, uh, I think it was YouTube. I heard something on YouTube. I'd just be listening to meditation music, so I'd be just listening to a whole bunch of random stuff, and it came on. Then I uh, sampled I figured I'd sample it, so I sampled it and put it in my uh, beat folder on, I got a Google Drive folder that I allow a couple producers to, I mean, not producers, artists to go into and they can just listen to my beats and stuff like that. But I have a beats and so 
uh, you know, made that, whipped it up. And my man, Poet D, he heard it and he was like, man, I, I want to use that. And we sent it out to my uh, buddy, Eric. It's another producer and he mastered, mixed it, mastered it, and did everything from the uh, vocals and mixed it and mastered the uh, beat up as well. Got you. What was your final reaction to the song itself? Oh, uh, my final reaction. Well, I was definitely satisfied. Definitely, uh, definitely satisfied because, well, my pretty happy reaction because a lot of people need that information because it's a lot of stuff going on right now and it's definitely a message, a, a serious message in that uh, single right there and. A lot of people were sitting in the house. They, they definitely should definitely check that out because it's a um like I said a good message. A lot of stuff that's going on right now and it's really re uh, relevant with everything that's going on. Gotcha. Do you feel as though, as a producer, because a lot of the times when you guys just send out music, you don't really expect to know what you'll get back from certain artists. I mean, granted when you have a certain relationship with an artist and you kind of expect what to know from them, uh, you, you already know what it is. But what would you say is your experience getting other artists on your songs that you don't know and getting something back, like, out the blue with your art? Um... Hold on, could you ask that again? My phone, I'm hot. All right. So, how would you say, excuse me, how would you say is your reaction to getting your, getting final songs from artists from your beats, whereas though you don't know them and you don't know what to expect? Oh, oh man, I, I'm, I get ecstatic, you know, especially to hear uh, artists I don't know because it's like a different flow, a different style. You get to hear somebody else, uh, melodic tunes or, you know, first to your to what you put and it's like, well, I didn't think I this was uh possible with this and you all I feel like I'm always amazed every time I get something back. I I haven't been uh, not amazed yet. Like I said, I'm not amazed. Gotcha. I feel like when it comes to uh being a producer and like sending music out and getting something back, there has to be a certain level of trust to send one send music out and to get it back and still trust them enough to like carry the art in a form where you both can like it so could you describe to us that level of trust as a producer to send music out to rappers i would say as a producer you shouldn't waste your time with if buddy is what you worry about it that's not what you should do. I feel as though you should work with artists that you feel like you can work with. That's not not saying nobody trash or anything like that. But work with artists that, that work good with your music, that work good with mine. That's what I do. I try to, and I have the trust that I believe in my heart that they not like it, any anybody I tell you, you know, I'm not, I, I tell you right now, but I'm not in it for the, you know, for the money. I'm just I'm in it because I want people to get my music. Gotcha. Uh, no. So that was Plagues by Poet Deep, the new single from Poet Deep, produced by episode 29 of Inside the Rapper Studios. Special guest, uh, LB. L Busy. L Busy, once again. Thank you very much for being a tough sport and answering all these hard-hitting on-the-fly questions. Um, thank you for being not... Thank you for being, I guess, on your toes when it comes to these hot seat questions because, trust me, they can come flying and you can not know what to expect. But you've legitimately knocked out all of my questions out the park, and I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. This is my first time, man. First interview. Thank you. Really? Yeah. Oh, man, don't tell me that. I feel so sure. Thank you so much, LP. This is, this is awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. So up next on Inside the Rapper's Studio, we have 
Benjamin Banger in the building, the one, the only. We're going to be talking about being a rapper slash producer. Also talking about his most recent uh, single, God Complex, and whatever's coming up next with the boy. Um, LB, do you have any last words, any last promotions, and any last propaganda for the people? Uh, I just want to uh, let everybody know that I'm coming out with uh, Voice 2 in the next couple weeks. So, you, shout out to that. And, you know, artists, I have free beats. Free beats for people. Free? Check me out. Yes. Free? Free beats. Free beats. I got it. <laughs> I got a nice, okay, nice little catalog. Just, just uh, check me, man. Got you, got you. Well, LB, it's always been a pleasure whenever we link up, and it's especially a pleasure on Inside the Rapper Studio. It's always good vibes when we talk, and I always appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming through. I really appreciate it. Thank you, brother. You have a good night, man. Don't sweat it. i also like to thank everybody for coming through, showing love to Inside the Rapper Studio, whether it's one second, one minute, or the entire episode. i also like to thank IG for acting right tonight and no having no commercial inter uh, interruptions. Trust me, that is a rarity. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So from me, the whole score F Swayze, and from our special guest of episode 29, L Busy, I would like to say to everyone, as always, wash your hands and stay in the house. All right. Thank you, LB. Appreciate it, man. All right, bro.